Hello and welcome to Rights Chapel. My name is Tiny and I'm the Director of Connection Ministries. Thank you for worshiping with us today. If you haven't already, we'd like to ask you to type in your name and the name of those worshiping with you in the comments section. This is also a great opportunity to greet one another and to say hello to those who may be new to online worship. If you have questions about Rice Chapel or you'd like to learn more about our B campaign, feel free to reach out to me directly at tanya at ricechapel.org or you may call or text me at 540-604-0038. Thanks again for worshiping with us today and may God bless you as Clay leads us into a song of praise. I'm Clay Motley, the music director at Rice Chapel, and I'm inviting you to join us in singing out loud these next few songs we're going to do. So whoever you got with you, Watch the words on the screen, sing it as loud as you can, dance if you want to dance, engage with us, have fun with us, and let's do some songs together. Living in poverty 
Welcome to Rice Chapel. It is so good to, to be in worship with you on this uh, second Sunday of, of the new year. Uh, appreciate you uh, making the time to be in worship whenever it is that you are worshiping with us. We, we pray that you will uh, draw near to God as, as God draws near to, to you. My name is Charles. I'm pastor here at Rice Chapel. Uh, and thank you again for making the time to be in worship. If you haven't already, we hope that you'll check in, that you'll let us know that you're worshiping with us. You can do that by simply typing your name and the names of all those who are in the room worshiping with you in the comment section. If you see someone else who has checked in, go ahead and uh, welcome them in the, the, the love of Christ. Uh, just a, a couple of announcements of, of things that are coming up. Uh, our, our mobile ministry is moving into a new space here in the church building um, the district office of, offices have been vacated, and we're going to move some of their stuff in there. Uh, on Saturday, January 14th, uh, Christina is looking for some folks who can come to the church about 9 o'clock that Saturday morning and help move uh, food items and shelving and, and that into, into their new space. Uh, if you can be able to help that, if you can comment and let us know that you're planning to come, that will help us in our planning as well. And so 9 o'clock on the 14th, if you can help um, with, that, with that move. Also, uh, we're getting ready for the uh, polar bear plunge. Uh, I know that we have one, uh, one young woman uh, from our youth group, uh, Jaden Puckett, is going to plunge for us. There may be others of you who are interested in. You can still sign up to do that. Uh, we jump in the water on February the 4th, um, that Saturday morning. The money that we raise uh, uh, through, um, through sponsorships and that uh, go to help our, our emergency uh, heating assistance and other assistance in the in the community it's a huge been a huge part of our our church for many many years and and uh, uh, if you'd like to contribute to that you can go onto our website uh, and uh, go to the polar bear plunge fund and contribute there as well so uh, appreciate everyone who's uh, working towards that effort on the 4th of of january or 4th of February. As we, as we move into a time of prayer, I want to invite you, if you, ever had any, if you have any prayer requests, to, um, to type them into the comment section. We want to be in prayer and ministry uh, with you uh, this day as well. Let us then go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we gather today to worship you, to sing, and to give honor and praises to your name. We worship in order to lay our needs and desires before you in prayer and to submit to instruction by your word. Enable us to worship you, not only in the way we are most comfortable, but also in the way you desire. Help us to see the gap between our declarations of love for you and our courage in serving you. Push us towards linking our praise of you here in worship and our work for you in your world. Move us from mere talk about righteousness, justice, and love so that we might walk the talk and be agents of righteousness, justice, and love. Hear our prayers for all those who are sick and in distress. May our hands and our words be a reflection of your great love. Be with those who are nearing death and help them to glimpse the glory that awaits them on the other side of life. We humbly ask all these things in your name as we pray the prayer we were taught to say. Our Father, who are art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm gonna 
shine I run through the night I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Yeah, this light of mine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine 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 Today's scripture lesson comes from Micah 6, 6 through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord, and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before Him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgressions, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to thank all those who have helped us in uh, leading our worship this morning. Let us then pray together. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts truly be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, I know that uh, last week, last Sunday, with uh, it being New Year's Day, that a number of folks uh, perhaps missed, missed worship. And so let me just say again, um, Happy New Year um, uh, to you. Uh, I, I am hoping and praying for a, for a great year ahead for um, my life, for my family life, and also for yours as well. Let me just ask as we get started, do, do, do any of you all ever make... Um, you ever make New Year's resolutions? Um, did you make any resolutions this year? Uh, maybe, maybe you haven't actually uh, told anyone your, your new resolution. Maybe, maybe you didn't formally write down your resolution, um, which actually writing down our resolutions can help us in, in keeping them. But, but even if you didn't write anything down, um, maybe it was in your mind that you've got something that that you are looking to improve, something that you are hoping to change in your life in 2023. What's a, what's a resolution that you've made this year or maybe in years past? And Go ahead and just comment that in the section. I'm curious to see what kind of things people have done. I, I've read this week that nearly 40% of us in the, in the United States make New Year's resolutions. With young people between the ages of 18 and 34, that percentage rises to nearly 60% making resolutions. So those of you who have made resolutions, let me just ask, how are you doing? Are you still at it? Good for you if you are, um, because 23% of people report that they've already quit their resolution by January 7th. If you're still resolved today in whatever resol resolution you made, then, then fantastic. Be warned, though, that 64% um, of us quit our resolution by the end of January. And we should further be warned, it is reported that most people quit on the second Friday of the month of January. That will be this coming Friday, the 13th. I don't know about, I don't know about you. But I'm making sure that I at least make it through Monday and not quit. The good news is that studies also show that 20% of us are able to keep our New Year's resolutions beyond two years and to turn those resolutions into a new way of life. I've always, I've always been a New Year's resolution maker. Every year at the beginning of January, uh, I make resolutions. 
And I'll tell you, like the percentages I shared earlier, I've been in every category. I've quit. Um, I've, I've abandoned my resolution in, in the first week. Uh, I've given up resolutions before the month of January was out. And yet I've also been in that small group who has been able to make a resolution and seen a long-term change in the way I live. My family, my family, they still laugh at me every year when I announce to them my resolutions. A whole new me in 23, that was my motto this year when I shared my resolution with my family on January 1. My wife Amy, again, just rolled her eyes and it was like, here we go again. <laughs> Amy's attitude towards me and my resolutions seemed to be that as long as your resolutions don't make my life miserable, well, then go ahead. <laughs> like most people in the United States, a, a lot of my resolutions have focused around my health and trying to eat better and exercise more. I've also made resolutions around finances and spiritual practices and family and, and work balance and, and others, other big areas of, of, my, of my life. Uh, this, year, um, this year, I resolved to drink more water and less soda. Resolved to bring my lunch to work rather than going out daily to buy lunch at, um, at the subway. In the past, uh, I've resolved to, to read more books and watch less TV, to join a, a fitness gym, to, to, I've resolved to learn to play guitar. And I got to tell you, that one, never, that one dev, never did materialize because I found that you actually have to practice. Um, I just wanted to be able to miraculously play. Um, in the past, I've resolved to spend more time in prayer, um, to journal to find a hobby that I enjoy, to connect more with, with friends. In the past, I've resolved to run a marathon, um, to write more notes to people in my life and express my care and thanksgiving for them. I've resolved, um, I've resolved in the past to be kinder and, and less sarcastic. And, and certainly... Um, some resolutions have worked out better than others. Please don't ask uh, my wife Amy if she thinks I'm any less um, sarcastic. But, but here is the thing. I like making resolutions at the start of the year because it helps me, helps me clarify, renew, and remember, of, remember my vision of what I want my life to be how I want to live. Making resolutions at the beginning of the year is like, is like sitting down and taking a big picture view of your life and saying again, this is who I want to be. And so to be this, here are some actions I can take in that direction. Now, admittedly, I've, I've sometimes faltered on my actions. But it seems always good to be reminded of the person I want to strive to be. Well, what is, what is true in our personal life, I, I believe, can also be true in our congregational life. At the beginning of the year, I believe it can be good for us to take a big picture look at our life together here at Wright's Chapel and to be reminded not only of who we want to be, but ultimately of who God calls us to be. And so for the next four weeks, we are going to engage in a worship series entitled The B Campaign. The B Campaign. Our 2023 B Campaign is based upon this passage of scripture from the prophet Micah, and in particular, Micah 6.8. He has told you, O oh mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. At the start of 2023, this is the big picture of our life and who God has called us as followers of Jesus to be. As Christians, 
We are those who are called to do justice. We are to be those who love kindness. And as Christians, we are to be those who walk humbly with God. Now, the, the specifics of how that plays out in our life may look, may look different for each of us. But because this is God's desire, it is also our desire for our life together at Wright's Chapel. So today, I invite you on this, on this day in January to proclaim that in 2023 that we at Wright's Chapel will try and be witnesses in our community of what a genuine Christian life looks like and that we will be just and that we will be kind and that we will be humble. So at the start of this 2023 new year, we are inviting each of you to sign up to be a part of our B campaign. Yes, we are asking you to sign up, to write it down. In some ways, it's kind of like making a resolution. And, and you'd be saying, I'm on board. In this new year, I'm going to try and be just and be kind and be humble. And, and so I want to invite, invite you. If you, if, you have your, if you have a phone with you um, uh, while, you're, while you're engaged this, or if you have an iPad uh, with you, if you're near your computer, to get on it now. And you can go right to, um, right to our website at rightschapel.org and click on, at the top of the page, click on B and sign up. You'll find the B. When you go to our website, you'll find the B at the top of the page. It, at the top it says home this week about ministries B. Click on, click on the B. And as you go down, you'll see where you can sign and give us your email and, and your name and that. And if you're trying to do that right now, and let me just say, if you're, if you're a neighbor, or you're, 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 you're trying to sign on and, and you're with somebody and they're struggling because they aren't good with technology, go ahead and help them sign up too. Because in helping them and not laughing at them and not rolling your eyes at them, you're being kind. <laughs> So when you, when you sign on um, to the B campaign, we'll be, we'll be sending you some information. We'll be sending you some updates. We'll be sending you some articles each week for the next, for the next four weeks. Uh, we've also got T-shirts um, that, uh, like I'm wearing today, like, the, like this one here. Um, T-shirts that, that we have in various sizes um, that we are offering for you um, to, to have as well. And, and, and we hope that you'll wear them. Um, if, you're, if you're out of the area and, and want, to, uh, want to have a shirt, let Tanya know. Comment in the section, let Tommy know, Tanya know, and we'll, we'll try and get you one. Uh, if you're in the area and, and want a shirt, we invite you to stop by the church um, sometime in the next week or so. Um, there are also yard signs. Um, yard signs that, uh, that you can have. Um, uh, be just, be kind, be humble if you're willing to have one of those um, and put that in your yard. Um, we, we'd love that um, as, as well. If, if, your, um, if your HOA doesn't allow yard signs, um, then you can stop by the church and get one, and you can put it in your neighbor's yard. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that wouldn't be kind. It might be funny, but not kind. Um, but you can, you can take, take one, um, stop by, get one, and, and place it maybe at your place of work or, or uh, in a median somewhere. See, the hope is that the shirts and the signs is that perhaps in our, in our witness that that can start a conversation with others. Maybe someone will see you wearing this shirt, this shirt and, and ask you, what, well, what's that about? And in doing so, you can talk about Wright's Chapel and, and what we are trying to be about as a church in this community. And perhaps it can begin a larger conversation of how we try and live out our faith. Because, because here's the deal. What we believe at Rice Chapel is that in our world today that can, be, that, that can be so cantankerous, and in a world that is so divided along so many different lines, be that politically, racially, economically, socially, and even, and even religiously, we believe as Christians 
that we are called to live differently. Our lives are to be shaped by the love and the grace of Jesus. And so amongst all those divisions in our our society, we are to be different. And we believe that God has provided us with a big picture view and a way of life that nearly everyone can agree with, with how we should live. Justice, kindness, and humility. It is how we are called to live as Christians. And I'm convinced that Democrats and Republicans, conservatives and liberals, even Jews, Christians, Muslims, Muslims, rich and poor, we can all agree that being just and being kind and being humble are good things. And that justice and kindness and humility are a part of how we want, as Christians, to live our lives. And I realize how we go about practicing each of these may look different. But the big goal and the big hope for many of us, it's the same. So the Old Testament prophet Micah lived from around 750 B.C. to perhaps around 680 uh, B.C. Much of the book of Micah is written leading up to and in the aftermath of the Assyrian invasion and the destruction of Israel that took place in 721 B.C. The Assyrian Empire, which encompassed part of what is now modern-day Iraq, Um, That was a major power of the area in the 700 B.C. area. Uh, Micah warns that this Assyrian invasion is coming against Israel because of Israel's idolatry and because of Israel's injustice against their own people, especially the poor and the vulnerable. And so when you read that, that, that small book of Micah in the Old Testament, It starts with a warning from Micah that God is going to come to judge, to bring justice, and that justice will come through the Assyrians. In chapter 6 of Micah, there is a, a court scene where Israel comes to stand in God's courtroom. The mountains, we are told, are are the jury. God notes that the people have forgotten God's ways that they have forgotten God's desires for their life. And and then in in verse 6 and in verse 7, the the defendant Israel asks this question and says, well, well, with what shall I come before the Lord? And, And how shall I bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before God with burnt offerings, with calves a year old, with a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with a thousand rams and 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgressions and the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? And the prosecuting attorney in that courtroom scene responds, No, no, God isn't looking for your sacrifices and burnt offerings and meaningless worship. The prosecuting attorney on behalf of God then replies with one of the best known passages in all the Bible. The passage that is at the center of of this RB campaign. He has told you, O O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. This is God's ultimate desire. This is how God wants us to live. And we should take notice (laughs) that it isn't a suggestion but a requirement. The the Hebrew word for justice is is a a word mishpat. Uh, It's it's actually a legal term that means judgment or punishment. But the word mishpat also refers to making a right decision or doing the right thing. Mishpat is a ruling in a court of law, but But justice also has to do with the laws that set forth what is right and wrong. You see, the very laws themselves can be just or unjust laws. Again and again throughout the Bible, God calls for mishpat. God calls for people to make right and fair and just judgments. And and most often the Bible calls for this 
particularly for the poor and the powerless and the immigrant. And of course, the reason why justice is so often focused on the poor and the powerless is that their rights were so easily taken from them and so few of them were able to stand up for themselves. So, in our modern day history, we can, we can look back and we can see laws that we can now see clearly were, were unjust. The, the Jim Crow laws that were so prevalent in our nation's past and that civil rights advocates fought against are, are of course, the prime example. And yet, in many instances, there are those still today who face injustice. And, and, and they don't always have the ability to advocate on their own behalf. They, they need others to stand with them to pursue justice. A few years ago, we were on a, on a youth mission trip um, in North Carolina. And, uh, and after doing some, some gleaning um, at a farm in the fields in the morning where we were gathering food for the poor... Um, in the afternoon, we met with a nonprofit agency group that advocates for migrant farm workers. Uh, migrant farm workers are part of who make it possible for us to get our fruits and our vegetables so cheaply in this country. Yet today, it is reported that there are between 300,000 and 500,000 migrant child farm workers in the U.S., who because of their status here lack, lack basic child labor protections that so many of us just take for granted. There's one report that states that 33 migrant children a day are injured working in farm labor situations. And I, I don't remember the whole of the issue that was being presented, but, but this um, nonprofit group who spoke to us was, was advocating for justice and for better working conditions for migrant workers and for their children. And, and as you might imagine, uh, migrant workers and especially their children have so little status to be able to advocate for themselves. And so this, this nonprofit group was advocating through legislative, legis, legislative processes in state government and by trying to put social pressure on companies to, to pay better wages. Uh, somewhere, somewhere along the way, it was, it was suggested by someone that to help the cause of these children, our youth could choose to no longer eat at Wendy's fast food restaurant. Because Wednesday, Wendy's at that time had refused to address these child labor issues with the tomatoes that they were purchasing for their burgers. And I'll, I'll never forget, my daughter Lydia, she jumped on that. And from then on, we could no, long, we could no longer stop at a Wendy's. And for Lydia now, it was a matter of justice. And, and I understand that that is partly how it works. And that there's justice issues around children um, but I, but I also, I also like a Wendy's double cheeseburger, like a lot. When when we focus on issues of justice, though, what we're saying is that it's not enough. It's not enough to just love God and to love our neighbor. We must also work towards justice for our neighbors who are being un, who are being treated perhaps unfairly, who maybe are being discriminated against, who are being judged and in some instances denied services because. Of, of what they look like or where they are born or because of a disability. But here's the thing about doing justice. <laughs> Let me just tell you, it's messy. It's complicated. And good and faithful Christians can disagree about how to create a more just society. We often disagree about what issues are most pressing and, and about what issues deserve our greatest attention. We can often disagree about how to approach these issues. Justice work is usually big work, and it's messy work. 
And it's because that it's big and messy and because it can cause conflict that we, we can often be tempted to just ignore it. But as Christians, we can't. Because the Lord requires it. The Lord requires us to do justice and for God's people to be just. On a small scale, um, doing justice boils down, perhaps caring about people that most others don't care about. We care about the least of these, as Jesus uh, called them. We work towards creating a society where none are forgotten, where all are treated justly. We can, we can work towards justice on, on, a small level, on a small level by our individual actions and by being intentional in, in who we reach out to and who we include in our circles. And we can work towards justice on a larger scale through advocacy and even legislation and through big social and, and even corporate change. On, on the screen is a website for USA.gov. You click at the top on that screen when you go to that website uh, where it says government agencies and elected officials. And it will give you contact information of how to get in contact with local government officials, local, state, and federal. And, and I'd encourage you to, to contact your local supervisor, or your legislator, the state, or federal government, and to let them know your commitment for justice on behalf of those that you are most passionate about. Maybe your passion is around children. Maybe your passion is around persons with disabilities. Maybe your passion is around veterans. Maybe your passion is around persons um, who face mental health issues. Maybe you have a, a passion around issues of equality. I, I don't know where your passion lies. But many groups of people face issues of injustice. And we are called to work with them on their behalf, seeking to do justice. Certainly there are unjust situations that we can't put right. And there are wounds of injustice that we can't heal. We can't make the wrong that has been done not to have been done. <laughs> Some injustice is so awful that, that it's impossible to make adequate restitution. And yet having said that, all of, it, all of that makes it even more remarkable that in hundreds and hundreds of Bible verses, God expects us expects you and me to do justice. Seeking justice can be complicated and messy and slow, slow moving. And yet we can take heart and we can have hope. For our God wouldn't have commanded it, required it, unless God knew that it was possible for us to make a difference. My hope, my hope as we enter into 2023, is that if you're around Wright's Chapel, um, you'll, be, you'll be seeing me carrying my, my water bottle and my, carrying my water bottle and my lunch box to work. <laughs> And my hope, my hope and my prayer for you is that in 2023 you'll lose weight and eat healthier, that you'll exercise more, that you'll get your finances in order, you'll stop smoking, that you'll spend more time with your kids and less time on social media. And, and my prayer is that you'll be successful in whatever other New Year's resolutions you may have possibly made. But more than that, my hope and my prayer for me, and I hope for you, 
is that we will each focus on God's resolution and that we will be followers of Jesus who seek to be just, who seek to be kind, and who seek to be humble. Peace and amen. Again, let me just say thank you for the gifts you give to the life of our church that just allow us to do uh, so much ministry in, in, the, name, in the name of Christ. And uh, I, I want to thank... Um, I want to thank all of those who have who have been around this week, just helping to kind of get us back up and 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 going in, into our routines. Those folks who have been working with Cindy's closet and been working so hard um, as stuff piled up over the over the uh, over the week to um, that we were off, and and our youth is back running, and our our uh, after school um, back and going, and. Um, Folks with mobile ministry are in and out of the building uh, doing stuff. Our lumberjacks have, have, been, have been busy. Um, we've got so much stuff that is going on, so many good things, um, trying to, to work to be the hands and feet of Christ in this community. And I thank you for it and the gifts that you give that allow us to do that in so many different ways, um, to be a witness to what um, a, a life of Christ, a life in Jesus looks like. Thank you for the gifts you give. Um, that allow us to do so many different things in his name. And now let me share with you this benediction, and then Clay will lead us into a final song of praise. That we might go forth into this world in peace and be of good courage. Hold fast to what is good and render to no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted and support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor every person. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the powers of the Holy Spirit. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, both now and forevermore. Amen.
week I want to run to the ones in need In the name of Jesus